All right. So one of the things that uh, we need to do here, one of the things that we believe that we is to have some kind of a monthly release. Part of this is to make it so that uh, John Ruby can get his job done reasonably. Uh, and another uh, aspect of this is uh, so that we can support the other teams as needed uh, to still do their work on top of the, top of the crowd. I mean, one approach is just to say, do it on mainline, but uh, that might not be as, as friendly or easy as they, might, as they might prefer. So one of the questions is exactly what we're doing. I can tell you some things we won't be doing. We're not going to do a full-up distro release fully supported every month. That's not going to happen. Okay? I'm sorry, but it's not. Uh, so the question is exactly what is it we'll provide? Uh, and what, what is it people need from us? Uh, and what performance it? Um, so uh, I think what we've been doing so far is we've been having kind of a designated thing that uh, John ruby has been pulling from time to time. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe John could, uh, could expand on what he's doing so far. Or what, what is it working out with it, correct? John here, what, what here's the question. This <laughs> is John uh, here. John Ruby here, I don't see where I'm yeah, yeah. hmm. Okay, from, uh, from right I know, I think that John was uh, pulling my tree on a regular basis, like once a week, and just doing a test build of it, and pushing that into some uh, some PPA or whatever, just to make sure that his, his own packaging was not broken and things <coughs> will, were still building for, for, for the current linear curl. So if we're going to go with a monthly release, at least we would, I, I see different steps that we, we need to have before we can achieve that is, the first one is testing. We need to be able to, to test the build to make, to make sure that if there's some breakage to here, we don't see those breakage only at the end of the month. So we need to have, if people want to use this, then what we need from them is some kind of test suite yeah. that we can run easily that will give a touch test. Yeah, because right now, I think it was like John building his own tree once a week, and when there, was, there were problems, he would just tell me that the, this particular board doesn't build anymore or there's a problem here or there. Question. Uh, isn't the validation uh, lab already have something they run on a continuous basis like that? We do, but uh, that's one question I have for y'all, what is the right set of things to run? And if you're talking about just a, are you talking about something to run continuously on the images or are you talking about something for a developer to run before they commit to the tree. Actually, it would be nice to have something that we can test the moment something comes committed to the tree. And what would that thing be? What, what would it include in your mind? Um, at least if we can test that every board we support <coughs> still do. That's the first thing. And so far, one of the problems I have right now is that I have a branch pending which adds supports for uh, HDMI on OMAP 4. But it's been said that that, that branch might break OMAP 3. I need someone to test OMAP 3 with that branch so I can accept it or not. Things like that. So there is a session on Thursday about uh, component validation, and it, it sounds like a, a possible use case for that. Um, it, the idea being, for the kernel side at least, um, what we would try to deliver is the ability to uh, submit a job to the validation farm that would uh, include individual components like kernel, um, and it would inject them into some some stable image and, and run the test based on that the new ground. Um, the problem is what form is the right way to deliver that. And uh, in your case, I would see this being um, some tree that, that probably is a first level test gets built for all platforms on, mm -hmm. uh, as an initial, you know, it's to build for it, and then take the resulting artifact out of that via uh, 
that's the thing we don't really know yet. Will that be a ending package or uh, a new image or what? And install that on the image and, and run some predefined set of tests. So what, uh, one of the things is that the question you're asking is something that needs to go not just to Nico. Right, exactly. But to the people who are trying to use it, right? So yeah. what is the targeted audience here? So you say it's not a district. Is it where you, you have the main release kernel, and then maybe someone finds a bug in it, God forbid, and they say, this guy is bug in it. Is, it, is yeah. this so they can say, ah, you fixed my bug, and they can come back and say, yes, stamp, close by, yeah. and close it off? Or is this just an uh, interim update with new features? Or I think we want to have a, a package kernel and user space every month that people can download and install. Okay, so it needs to, it does need to be fairly decent quality, then. Right? So yeah. So the but the thing is, for, for that to, to happen, we need to have some assurance that the kernel would build and <coughs> run before that point, because most of the time it might not. So we have to fix it before the end of the month. So the, another thing that uh, when I've asked that question in the TSC, the things come back that they like the fact that uh, the tool chain is actually used by quite a few different organizations outside of Lanar. And they'd like to see some of that happening with the kernel too. Right. Um, although in that case, it's hard to know how to test it because you don't know what they're using it for. Yeah. But so hence my focus within Lenaro because of there, and then we do have people that would want to use you know, the last stable um, Linux with the newest ARM changes on top of it. Well, well, I guess what I was saying is, so this, this is more of a kernel tree looking forward. Yes. Rather than uh, one that we had in the past with some extra stuff on top which fixes some bugs, this is actually leading up to a release. Well, I, I don't know if the, 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 the concept of a formal release in this context still makes sense. Right? Okay. Are we still going to have those six month release cycles and things like that, or those are just going away? My personal focus has always been very heavily upstream. Uh, and uh, I mean, exactly <coughs> because if you uh, partly because in the kernel we haven't seen a whole lot of a lot of users for it outside of Monaro, at least not the ones that I'm aware of. Maybe people download it, and I just don't, I don't know about it. Yeah. Uh, but of course, if, if everything is in upstream, we don't have to release anything. Yep. Right. <laughs> but the thing is that we we might want people to test and play with those things before mainline is released. Yes. So it's, it's a way of getting a preview of the ARM-related mm -hmm. new features without getting the other stuff. In other words, get the, in other words get, you get a tree that gives you the, only the instability for new ARM features rather than the instability yeah. for other stuff. ARM next. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I think that's what the purpose of serves is a place to take the stuff that the landing team is doing and helping bring the vendor kernel substream and some of the work that we'd be doing with Arrow and other members in the community are doing for ARM and throwing them together as a way for people to test and say, okay, this feature works by itself, this feature works by itself, but when we put them together, we're breaking half the boards. Okay, and then I have a question. Well, where is this repo held? Is it on kernel.org? No. Right now, it's yes. on uh, GitHub.org. Okay, it would be, I wonder if, it's, if you should have like a kernel.org account or something and call it ARM next or something. It depends, because we don't want to support everything. Mm -hmm. oh. the, the purpose of Linaro is to have uh, kind of... We don't want to support people which are not members of Linaro, I think. Oh. Well, I wonder if you could actually would... I don't know how kernel.org would allow, but have like maybe a Linaro next. Have Linaro in the name of the Git tree. Then you could say you're not part of, you know, that way if someone says, I want to do this, you say you're not support you. Yeah. <laughs> or be. is that going to be an issue? I mean, there there are sub projects maintained in yeah. current Git, Git tree and kernel org, so I don't think that's a problem. It's like, hey, this is this is a playing ground for ARM ARM code, but these are some of the rules we're going to follow. I don't right. think it should be a problem. Well, I guess the thing is basically, um, if you want testing, one thing I notice is the best way to get testing is when it's in a place where people know where to look. You know, first thing I do when I want a kernel, or I go and look at kernel.org and see what kernels are out there. And that's why, I don't know if you, if it's not on kernel.org, you may not ever see it or not know about it. So if you want users and testers, having it public in a, a well-known location is the best way to get get that. Yeah, but I don't think that people have problems finding the Lenaro kernel, though. If they know about Lenaro. Well, that's the point, they should. <laughs> <laughs> you think they should. But that's they our purpose. Yes. <laughs> but the, the location of kernel is not... 
well, could have a copy on Colonel Thorne, then personally I have bigger problems finding what I want there <laughs> because yeah. there are too many trees. Mm -hmm. That's true. Ooh, we've got uh, boats back there, so one of those things we've got back. That's just one suggestion, I guess, for just yeah. having a better testing right. or more right. testers. Right. But I think even if we have the Git tree on kernel.org, there's still a desire to have a monthly yeah. tarball release of some sort, regardless of where the Git tree is hosted. Yeah. So I guess as long as we publish exactly, this is our next, or this is please, you know, our RC release or something. Mm -hmm. Call it an RC release or something and get people to try to say, can you test this, make sure it works, this is what's going to be out there. Mm -hmm. So I guess part of it is, uh, the interesting thing with that, that would be what we'd be doing if we were uh, syncing up with uh, kernel with the mm -hmm. with the upstream release, in mm -hmm. which case we'd uh, be timing it for the next merge window. Right. So it might be serving double duty uh, in mm -hmm. that case, which is probably a good thing. So I seem to do something that has multiple releases. Yeah, that's why I said if you had like an arm next, or maybe if, maybe not Lenaro have an arm next, but maybe try to push out an arm next. Mm -hmm. That you know, yeah, if someone is there one at all? Do you know if or there's a Lenaro next? I don't know if there's a well, I don't know if well, Brussels has an arm tree. Does he have an arm tree? tree I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Is it? Is this it's always included in my tree, but the, I I don't like I don't really like this name of Lenaro next because it used to be like Linux next in the beginning. And then I dropped that because there was no one using it at all. Hmm. So the idea now is that I would just pick the, the, the current state release for mainline. Let's say for now it's 2638. And then I would just add all the ARM bleeding edge stuff hmm. on top of that, keeping the, the kernel core stable. Yep. Well, that's ideally what you're sp every maintainer is supposed to do is hmm. start off with like. <coughs> A stable kernel release and have their changes only, and and Linux uh, and Linux Next itself is just supposed to be a place that you make sure you don't conflict with others. Yeah, nothing more. Because it's been rebuilt uh, every other day. Yeah. So the tray maintainment is is going to be stable until the next upstream uh, mainline release. Right. At which point I would just drop that branch and start over with two six thirty nine. Yeah. So what, you you rebase every time then. I hope I don't have to rebase anything. The, okay. mm -hmm. the idea is that the people sending me stuff, they should send that to mainline as well. Yeah. So the next cycle, I would just have to merge the new stuff and the old stuff would be merged into mainline. Okay, okay. so it's looking ahead precisely one. Uh, yeah, maybe it's, it's just a way to, 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 to shorten the cycle for, for uh, three months. Right. So people can have access to all the new ARM technology three months before it's available in mainline. Okay. And even then, when it's, it's available in my tree, it's probably going to be merged in the next merge window, which means it will be available in the next release six months later. Right. Okay. And okay. so the idea of having a monthly release is to have what I have, like a, a snapshot every month, okay. package that with what's available in the user space and all the other Linux groups mm -hmm. makes that available in the whole that keeps people can test and install on their boards. Yeah. And Nicola, what do you do with stuff which is uh, uh, not uh, handy to go upstream? We've talked about that so in the last cycle. Yeah, that's a the topic I was about to bring. Uh, you take the assumption that uh, everything that is going to go upstream quite soon, but uh, we've seen that it's not the case. Yeah, and th there are things that will never go upstream, yeah. which are still re required right now to, to have those boards usable. The biggest problem is graphics. Not just that, but uh, um, I'm talking about the map for all your stuff that mm -hmm. you've taken is not going to upstream. What? Yeah, the audio on the map for Yeah. Wait, there are apparently. things that we've done into your kernel format for which are not going to upstream. We just did that because we wanted to make a full feature kernel. Mm -hmm. but I, I, well, I think the audio on my on four is being included for the Ubuntu kernel. Mm -hmm. It's not in mine. Okay. But can I ask, uh, wait, you said some things will not be going upstream ever? And that's, why is that? Uh, when I receive a merge request, with a diff, tab, a diff stat that says that there are 600,000 new lines 
I say no. Oh, no, okay, I understand. No, that. but you're not taking them into your kernel either. And, and that, most of that is due to some uh, graphics infrastructure with our traction layers and... Well, I guess my, my let me rephrase the question because, um, or maybe I'm not understanding it correctly. Uh, instead of saying, when I hear something say it'll never go upstream, it means like the functionality will never go upstream. Can the functionality go upstream, not the code, because the code may be crap or like or bloated or whatnot, and yeah. do something like Thomas has been talking about before, restructuring, using internal infrastructure? Uh, it's but a bit different than that. We're talking about binary proprietary graphics driver. Oh, so basically it's got a binary blob attached to it. It's got a binary okay. blob in user space, and it's got this oh. whole infrastructure and kernel space for it. Okay. Okay, that, and that, that usually that's, that's, that's <laughs> you, you asked. That's, yep. that's bloated, and yes. that's the only thing we have right now if we want to have decent graphics performances. Yes. Is that stuff from my ima imagination or whatever? I mean, is there any chance that stuff gets opened up? No, not at all. I mean, there's no way. Okay. Um, not until they, sometime. This TI there there, have, there have been changes like that have happened where things have been just yeah. right here, right here, and finally opened up. But uh, they happen in their own good time, and right. we can't plan mm -hmm. at this point on that happening. I mean, obviously, we can do what we can to try to grab people into doing it, and uh, you know, we should, right? But we can't say we can't make a plan saying by July they will release. Can we can, we control that. can Lenar discuss a little bit more, say, with uh, Arm Holdings or the board? Lenar, I'm sorry, through that way. Oh yeah, and then some of those discussions do yeah, happen. Soon. Yeah, those, that is happening with uh, um, some degree of success, I guess. Is that right to put it, George? But not a really huge degree of success yet. But this, this is not surprising. These, these are the, the time frames for these things are measured in years. Mm -hmm. yeah, there will always be proprietary technology that that, around, that people regard as core IP. Right. right. So if you're a graphics vendor, there are huge IP issues to to going open. Right. Uh, now maybe. Somebody like Arm would say, I'm looking for competitive advantage. I'm going to take that risk. I'm going to open up. Okay. But we can't rely on it. And what we can almost certainly rely on is that we will still have to deal with legacy graphics suppliers who are going to stay proprietary. So that's just the world we have to live in. And that can never go on screen. So, mm -hmm. but, but each of those vendors accepts that. Our goal, I think, in the, in the graphics group and in the film group is to create a common infrastructure and, uh, and, and make it so that each vendor has a common infrastructure to plug into to try and stop this fragmentation of everybody implements in a different it's way. It's very difficult to scale. It's impossible. It's impossible to maintain, it's impossible to scale, and the SOC vendors themselves hate it because they have to carry all of their own proprietary changes to what is effectively a proprietary set of software to start with. They often carry their own kernels as well, just because. And that's what's going on in the graphics working group this week of to try and standardize at least how memory management is done. And then each of these graphics vendors will have to change their implementations to match this if we can get consensus. But the pain point has now got so high that there's a strong desire to achieve consensus. And that will at least be a proof point that it can be done for one thing. And if we can kind of keep going like that, hopefully we can. It is here. It's not a it's not a binary all or nothing thing. No, of course. Uh, it's, it's the the less weird stuff there is, the better. Um, and uh, we should take advantage of whatever we can to keep it down to a dollar R, right? Maybe eliminating grit would be entirely be wonderful. When I get there someday, we aren't there yet. In the meantime, I get pressure from those vendors to include in my tree their binary support code. And so far, I've been saying no. Because Good. It, it would Good. That's the right answer. To say no. Yeah, <laughs> but it would send the, the the wrong message, and I want I want to keep the pressure on them to maintain that crap. Mm -hmm. But the problem with that is that we end up with a kernel which is which is not <coughs> useful because it lacks graphics support. So, what should we do about that? Well, one one approach is uh, to allow them to. Uh, Rebase on top of your tree. They can they can certainly clone your tree and put their yeah. stuff on top of it. So that's what's been happening happening in the uh, landing team. So okay, is uh, is that uh, how's that been working for you from your viewpoint? Uh, well, 
that's where I've been asking them to send me anything they want to have in the next release that can be merged. Mm -hmm. So that's how I, I, I got those, those pull requests with 600,000 lines. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that is a reasonable approach, because if you keep the kernel clean, and you right. do these monthly right. releases of a clean kernel, then the platform team can take that clean kernel, combine it with the unpleasant binary stuff to create the evaluation bills mm -hmm. of the complete distribution on that SOC once a month. But keep the kernel clean. Yeah. So okay. any, any but in the meantime, I'm, I'm still interested in anything that can make the board boot. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so far that our new boards that still are not booting in my kernel because they're lacking those, those uh, yeah. small pieces. And there's part of education, my part of others, to, to tell those those people to split their Git tree into two branches. Things that can go, in, go into my tree and the ugliest stuff into the other branch. Shouldn't the soft manufacturers or the vendors, what have you, graphics folks, shouldn't they be prepared to commit some resources to, to help that integration? I mean, obviously they can't do 600,000 on commits. they got to follow some kind of best practice. But shouldn't they be, I mean, shouldn't there be sort of a regular interface between you and some of that upstream stuff? I mean, you're doing a lot of work for them. So, so let me see. So what, what's happening now then is, is they, that they either clone the uh, mainstream, mainline, or they clone Nico's tree and mm -hmm. put stuff on top of it. So, so Git uh, kind of forms the interface by, you have Nico's tree, and then they pull from it and put their stuff on top. So okay. have, I, have I got that right, mm -hmm. Nico, or am I right. confused? Okay, so, so get, 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 for, get forms the interface. Mm. Right, so once they put this stuff on top and built this big, completely different kernel, does that then go into these hardware packs, or is it kept completely separate? That, that's what I've been telling them, just to push those binaries into the hardware so packs. So one problem with that, then, is that they could have changed all sorts of things, and the poor old user starts running it and gets a kernel panic. And it's mm. not in the graphics code, right? It's some completely unrelated code, which this yeah, 600,000 line block changed. Clear. And because who, who has to pick up the pieces mm. then? Well, one of the yeah. goal of the kernel <laughs> working group is to get all those vendors with their own kernels and try to consolidate that into a single kernel. Mm. Because we want to be able to build a kernel from the same source tree. Mm -hmm. Right now, uh, the Ubuntu kernel for OMA4, it has it on its own branch because it's breaking things all around. If you add audio for OMA4, it might break audio for the other platforms. If you add video for OMA4, it breaks uh, video for OMA3. So that's the, uh, one of the problems we want to solve. But then we went into a conflict, a goal conflict with it without. If we exclude the graphics, then we, we're back to square one because we don't know what they're doing in their own tree. Plus you can't run on a lot of boards and have graphics because they're being yeah. days. <laughs> For the graphics stuff, why don't you, can you keep like an out of tree module or something we do with NVIDIA or PC? That's what we did with uh, Maverick and Ubuntu. So the, the, the kernel source code, I mean the, the big stuff that is in the kernel is in fact in and mm -hmm. it gets built every time you start to get it. Yeah, that, that, that's one possibility, but <laughs> those people need to be thought how to do those things. Who well, are those people? That's a good question. The high high version of developers. Who are those people? The, the, the vendors. Okay. And uh, of course, I, I think that you UTI guys are uh, doing quite a good job out of it. But the so. vendors are not that, that far with their uh, mastering of Git and rebase and uh, kernel maintenance. I think what, so the advantage of forcing them to use modules is that one, they don't trample on over your core code. Um, and two, if a user has a bug, you can at least ask them to reproduce it without the module. Mm -hmm. right, if it's graphics, that might not be such an easy <laughs> thing to do. But if they can then reproduce the bug without the module loaded, at least it's, we know that yeah, we can sure. look at it. it. It gives you some useful testing feedback. Otherwise, you have to discredit every single bug report for that kernel. Uh, or waste days looking into it. Well, if it's 6,000 line, or so, was it 600,000? 600,000. 600,000 line, like, you know, changes, you know, then you don't, I mean, they got to support their own kernel. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the bug report goes back to the one who made those changes, not to, you know. What was this? Yes, but, uh, but uh, the reason for creating Linear was to help all those people get together and produce a single kernel in the hope that all that stuff could go into mainline someday. Mm -hmm. Well, we So if we're then back to telling them just 
do your own things and we don't want to hear about that. We're well, just going in circles. No, no, not really. It's, I guess it comes down to a communication uh, issue right. because you can't just say go into your own kernel, but you say, but you say, look, we can't. We, we're trying to keep everything common, but we can't have proprietary binary blocks. Yeah, well, and if they say, well, we have our own, so well, build on top of ours because the advantage that you get from building on top of ours is that we're pulling from everyone, mm -hmm. and you still get everyone else's work mm -hmm. for you. Yeah, that's, so that's the the, the, the the arrangement we have right now. Yeah, so basically you push that, but you say, but we can only pull the stuff that's not proprietary. If you have stuff that, if you could get your kernel down to something where, I mean, the kernel still won't boot without their added patches, but try to push back at them to say, but can you try to get your patches smaller? Because have, carrying a 600,000 line patch is very, is a burden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they, they can get, it's like, you'll push them to get maybe a more of a it's, common. It's huge, but I think that it's only 150 commits. So there's probably one big commit in there. Adding, uh, I don't know, eighty thousand lines. <laughs> I mean, is it intrusive, or is it just one big blob that they have? Like, uh, it's a huge directory that they just put in there oh. with so with their HAL and everything. Mm -hmm. So it probably isn't big, you no. So it's <coughs> in, in this particular example, it's just a matter of telling them to split up right. their good stuff from the bad stuff and. Yeah, and you could do that. Yeah, and say I'll pull from that tree, but mm -hmm. I won't pull this mm -hmm. the bad stuff. So try to get in the try to get in the. Like, I want to pull tell them I want to pull something, but just yeah, yeah keep that. They know thing. already. I told them that last week. <laughs> yeah, so maybe that's a good it, way. It's to it just just getting back to the, the topic. What what do we do with the monthly release about this? Mm -hmm. right. We want to have graphics in the release, otherwise it's not it's not right. useful. I don't want that in my tree. So how do we package and deal with that issue every month? Well, are the landing is the yeah, we have think, the landing we teams make, also I think do we a monthly release, and we have the landing teams put their stuff on it. And they do a monthly release on top of our release. Right? Okay. So then, uh, who will package that? It will be John that will go after all the landing teams, or do we push uh, the packaging responsibility to the, to the landing teams themselves? I don't think the landing team landing teams are usually running pretty hot. I don't yeah. think they're going to do any. John's not here to sign off. Yeah. <laughs> when you say packaging, you mean Toggle or are you doing devs? That's not dev. I would think that we want to have something that can be used with uh, the linear media create tool. Uh -huh. So it's probably packaged kernel with the. I thought you were asking some kernels. He did. That's what, yeah, I think that's what he has. But that's, but that's okay, but, that's yeah. just a, that's just one, that's just the way, the format of it is, yeah. so, right. Now, say if you had a tool that, I don't know, if every vendor that had their binary blob had a separate patch based off of your, your tree, and had a tool that if you build this board, you say you run this tool or something, downloads your thing, and then downloads maybe the patch, or like downloads the two tarballs, and then does the patch on it to see if that board will boot or whatnot, and it doesn't boot, then you have a way of saying, hey, your thing broke. Mm -hmm. I mean, having a way, that, so the user itself, I don't know, or whoever builds it, or whatever, the tool. I know that Kiko asked for a tarball. Personally, I don't think that's useful. Because who would be interested in tarball? It's mostly developers. Mm -hmm. And developers, they can get the tarball or whatever from the Git tree directly anyway. Right. I'm almost thinking like the old I evil NVIDIA way, like installing their NVIDIA, where it would download the latest kernel and then download the package and then it would do all the build and it would right. build everything for you. Almost like uh -huh. you had that type of facility to like download the, the good stuff and then the evil stuff and then build. The, so at least get users uh, aboard that boots. Right. So, so in some way what we, what we would be doing is we would be consolidating the, the whole process of taking in a third party driver. And we could help, we could work with all the different landing teams to say, here's a, if you're gonna have a proprietary driver, Here's the way you package it so that we can easily pull into our kernels, mm -hmm. and so that Canonical can pull into the bunch of kernels. Right. Yeah. Basically, have it so there's a, a common format to get your binary crap in. I, I hate to say that it's like helping them out. <laughs> right, but it's, it w it's but, gonna happen. Right. But now. it's still go it's gonna be a tedious. It's gonna be the way it's already done by Nvidia. It's gonna be a tedious step for them. It's, it's yeah. gonna be at the user level, but it's not gonna be something at a central level. But at least you could get the latest snapshot mm -hmm. and the binary stuff for your stuff to boot. And did get they, both did tested. They present their blobs in a common format. They just ship tarballs. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah, like I said, as long as there's a common format by every vendor, and then you had a tool that just okay, I need this vendor and this, and I know how to get the two things and put them together and build. And a lightweight test. And that way, it would be <coughs> easy for people to get to work. And that could be something that's integrated, possibly integrated into our nightly builds. 
Yeah, and, and right now, what on the Freescale example, what, what they have, the biggest part of the code is into the kernel right now, and they have it in a good tree. And look too deeply, but probably they could just shift everything into a module and build it separate from the kernel. At least for TI, that can be the, I mean, what we receive from AMG is, is an excellent module. So mm -hmm. we use DKMS to build it. Anyway, so. mm -hmm. right. so, so. I would like to get to a point where we have only one kernel and everything <coughs> that's controversial could be pushed into modules that can be loaded at, at runtime. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. so, right. Because we want, we want to. Still, again, with that principle, that the purpose of Lunar was trying to make things better looking into mainline. Yeah. So if if we make proprietary driver too easy to support. Yeah, that's the danger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you said you got the, like, you have a balance here. It's how easy can you make support compared to how do, how do you get people to have boards that boot? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There are constraints. Yeah. Yeah, that's the two. That's the two. The balance you have to make. Exactly. That's why I'm trying to come up a way that may it might be a hit that balance. <laughs> mm -hmm. How frequently are these uh, patches that are going in, these binary patches, actually stopping the boards from booting pretty tight in just binary blobs that should be included in the hardware pack separately? No. You, usually those big patches are not preventing the, the board from booting. It's just that the people working on those are just blending everything together. So I have to push back on those and tell, tell them just to split up little fix to make the board boot into separate branches from the big okay. drivers. That works being done by the lane, so. Um, some are better than others. Yeah, I know some are better than others. So it is, it's, still, it's still something that has to be worked out. They will get that work done. Right. So, so you, believe, you believe that um, what we're suggesting here, that the uh, Main hand, main line will portion is something the kernel team does, and the landing teams put the dummy handle function on top of that for really little and modules is workable. Well, the the landing teams working on up, upstreaming stuff as well. Okay, well of course, and but that but that well, if they're well, upstreaming, course, we we pull it directly into, into mm -hmm. Nico's stream. Well, the point is right now they've done an enablement to bring everybody up to 638. Right, and that's not clean. Right, right. So and some of the guys just said, look at this tree, and tell me what you want, and you go in. No way. <laughs> right, we just. Which is what I was expecting. Yeah. The, the point now is, is that you were expecting we that, huh? Yeah, sure. It's, <laughs> it's not. It's not you're telling me that. I, I was expecting. Well, what I was hoping is you tell them that and they get the picture. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big difference between you telling them and him telling them. Yeah, that's right. I can yeah. tell them that and put it in the face until you tell them that. It's like, oh yeah. no, I really can't. <laughs> but that's fine. The point is, is at this point we'll split the thing up and we'll get this stuff upstream, and we can stuff. bring in the enablement pieces that as we can. But I fix the I mean, that's not going to go upstream. No, there's, 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 there's the landing team has two sets of things. There's the stuff that's never going to go upstream, and that's what we've been worried about recently. But there's a bunch of stuff that will go upstream. It's just maybe yeah. not there yet, or it needs to be needs to work some more, or, or okay. whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. actually, I just okay. want to clear up the real quick thing, just so I understand this better, because I actually probably misunderstood you, but now I think I understand is the fact that when you said the board isn't boot without these, you know. 6,000 or 600,000 lines, it's not the binary blob that's used for booting, it's actually there's a fix among that 600,000 Yeah, exactly. Line that's the open. fix is just drawn into that big merge. Uh, okay. I, did, I didn't get that. You'll, you'll find there's S-squared interactions, there's USB patches, there's all kinds of yeah. stuff in those blobs. Okay. 600,000 lines. So that's a different, that's actually a different, I was thinking that it actually needed the binary blob to no, boot. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's a pr uh, easy to solve. It's just that if you don't have a serial port, if you don't have a, you don't have graphics. Yeah, okay, console, then actually, then I, let me take back about that binary blob thing, and uh, was like, <laughs> I'm totally against that now, <laughs> and <laughs> say that okay, the pushback should be to make it so. Just give us the fixes to make it boot. Yeah, and that's what's been happening. The, the point is, it's what he's talking about is that there are um, user space modules for every vendor mm -hmm. for graphics, and some, some there are some for multimedia as well, and there are. Um, Kernel modules. I mean, if you look at a Mali implementation, it's usually UMP and uh, lib Mali, or right. Mali KL, right? Um, that's one particular Mali implementation. 
another one that um, SDR since drops, you know, painting replaces it with HWMM. Uh, there's the SGX modules. So there are current modules there that you build. Um, and then Freescale does some as well. But there's always this binary user space component as well. Yeah, but that comes up after boot, and that's actually something that's loaded as a module, though, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But none of those. None of those things are upstreamable. They're all being talked about by Jesse and the other. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said my, my thing is that we what the push should be, the focus should be, is on getting the stuff that makes the boot car, the the board boot. That should be to me. That's the focus. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, and that's that's kind of what's being worked on. And and, and then um, me, about the mechanic of how we're going to do the most uh, releases. Like for example, Nico would do this stream, and who's doing the build? And who's doing the validation? And if the validation find a bug, how much, who's responsible for fixes and how fast? And do we have resources to do the releases at this moment? I think we're going to have to do validation. It just, I mean, we can try doing validation the whole thing. But uh, what we'll find is that uh, fault isolation will force us to, fault isolation will force us to, you know, do validation of pieces of it. And that's why that's why Steve was talking about making it be a little long. Right. Because if the not a lot of stuff that's talking about streaming would be a separate line, then you can easily drop it out and then actually rebuild. But I think you're asking a general question there. Yeah, the, the flow of the whole thing. Who's There's the flow of who's responsible, how do we do right. validation on monthly release? I think that's probably one of the more important questions. And then because do we have the resources like whether in the validation team or in the community team to uh, Resources that's why that's why I was asking in the beginning who might test all the boards when I merge something and I don't know if it can break something else. <coughs> so what the validation tools can do is watch some tree that you have and this would be like a proposed changes I guess if you're going to push in your tree but you want to see if it breaks. And whenever there's a change to that bullet, make sure it builds for everything. Mm -hmm. And runs these tests, and there would be a, a report that you could see for that, what, what happened with those builds. Um, but um, that, that's probably about as far as the automated validation is going to take. You can't uh, inspect what changed and, and try to determine what broke and why. Can that test RNS build all the kernels and boot it on all the boards? We can boot it on all the boards and have support for it. Mm -hmm. Which right now is Eagle X and Panda, but that should be the same Because if I could have, I don't know, a web page or whatever, just giving uh, a Git URL and tell the tool, go there, build everything, I'll try it tomorrow morning. I want, I want to know if it works. Um, not really quite how we looked at it. I mean, uh, what would be the difference in your mind? I mean, it, that versus this checking every 10 minutes or something to see if there's any change on that trade. Oh, I don't, well, I don't mind. Go I mean, ahead. it's just that if I have a test branch somewhere, it might not be the main branch. Right. I will wait until I have the results before merging for, for, for people. No, he talking about making like a script or something that will automate, like we could write support a script that every vendor could have that, you know, when there's a change in your tree or whatever, you could download, boot, test, and automatically do that. Um, Is that the idea what you would like? You mean every vendor doing the, 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 that testing? Yeah, they could have their own validation tests for their own boards, and that we okay. could say, we could give it to them a, a script. Say here, mm -hmm. it'll download your latest stuff. It'll boot, and you could run right. They could write a validate, or we have a validation test for them, and it will run boot and. Sure, but that's that's, that's what they do. Lava. That's yeah, what they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's what Paul Larson over there is. Right. Yeah. What his so, job is. So we've got these boards in the lab, and the whole point is that um, this could watch your tree. And do like a like what I was talking about earlier was like a first level test to make sure that it builds on everything. That's trivial to set up in in mm -hmm. And what that could do then is, is kick off a second job for each of those boards where it built. Try to boot that that resulting artifact on um, all of those boards and run some tests on. Well, have you heard of K test? K test. Uh, uh, actually, if you download the latest kernel. Uh, and go to tools testing, it was in there, it's actually script I wrote, it actually basically does that already, but I mean right now I focus, I have a few tools, but I'm expanding it and 
Um, it's basically what it does is it basically automates building, booting, and testing. So if um, and what test is that? Well, the actually the test if you pass in it's a variables test. It's a very simple script to, to be able to figure out, and it just executes the test itself is just a script that you would execute that would run the test. So you could do any test you want. You just have. To, well, I'm saying so that, it, it automates the build. Is that it? Yeah, it, it will build, boot, and uh, it automates all that. <laughs> does it by sex does the uh, thing? Well, I think it's considered that we're not just yeah. doing uh, deployment ability. Right, yeah, but, so once you, once, but you still have to build, boot, and test no, first right. before you get to that level. And test level, then you <laughs> put in another test in the test variable that it will kick off the second test. Or the, once it boots, right. and it gets to that point. But that's assuming that we would build it on these machines after booting something, right? What do you mean? Uh, as opposed to cross-building and taking that. It takes, I mean, actually, it, K-Test actually requires two uh, a server and, okay. and a board yeah. or, or a target. It's probably worth looking at, but it, but it sounds yeah, like right it there. would add an extra layer of complexity on top of all the time. Okay. So, um, but, but I'd be happy to take a look at it. If it's already there, I'm trying to make it, I'm trying to get more ideas into right. how to do that. The only thing is I don't want to be adding the test cases. That's why I had it separately. It's not to be a test, but for anything to do with build, uh, building tests, build tests, boot tests, and run kicking off another test. That's kind of like the one to get this idea. What does it, it require? Serial port, serial port. Well, serial requi right now, the requirements for this is you need to have two machines where one machine can reboot the power, recycle the uh, cycle the power of the other one, and it could read a, a console via standard I/O. Right, and the, the system that we have set up reads console over a, uh, a cyclase box. And we have uh, remotely accessible power distribution units, just like yeah. that. And some boards support it, and some boards don't. Yeah. Right. So, but I'd say if you have, and I, I could change that to uh, whenever if there's, if you need some other feature that make that work. Right. It's relatively. That's something we already have working. We already have right. deployment working. What would you be willing to like? You know, show me what you have, and uh, so I'm, I'll pull it into KTAS. I mean, that's I'm. I'm sure. I, right. Yeah. So it's something I want to make it very flexible. It's idea, the whole idea, I know I'm going off topic real quick, but the whole idea of KTS was to get more kernel developers automate tests. Sure. <laughs> Personally, I don't really mind how the test is implemented, mm -hmm. as long as it's, it's been tested somewhere, somehow. Yes. Yes. I mean, because you could also have it so that when you check something into that good branch, mm -hmm. it automatically just have a post script that just kicks off the tests. Yeah, sure. So you don't have to you don't have to do anything except just do a push. Or I, I could have a, so a what I'm saying is you don't have to have something that automatically kicks off the test. If you push something to that branch. No, okay. no problem. I, I could have a, a permanent test branch somewhere that you always test, but that's not <laughs> right. the official branch. When when I get the results it will just merge <laughs> into the main branch. Something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and I've asked the landing team to actually try um, keep a, a branch of your tree up to date with our stuff and then run it through an automated test. Just waiting on Paul and Virginia. So that's the thing that we're talking about yeah. that I mentioned earlier with the component cool. automation. Well, why not run nightly builds every night and then say take one of the, the ones that actually builds and works every week and say, okay, it's so one of the decent candidate for the monthly release. The, the, cha the challenge we face is that uh, just the build is one thing, but the thing is we got uh, we're a large variety of boards we support. I think we, I think we keep it down to about 10, isn't it? I can't remember exactly which ones we're supporting them are. So you have to run it on all the hardware. I thought you just said on that 3 and on that 4. No, that's just no, that's, that's, that's just that's now. Okay. Yeah. That's just, and then you got, uh, you got Samsung, like Freescale, uh, uh, SD Ericsson. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to leave somebody out, too. I hate that. Samsung, but Thanks so 9 builds okay. won't work. I'm sorry? 9 builds won't work. Well, you do 9 build, but you need to boot on a bunch of pieces of hardware. We're going to do more than that. Yeah. More frequently, actually. Yeah, so we've got to a place where he's got a couple of boards from one manufacturer. And to get this to where we can totally rely on that, we need to get the full array of boards that one of our supports. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's getting there. Right. Uh, but he's oh, not all the way there yet. So lava can't be, be implemented in the short term, but potentially in the long term for those. We have it done by this week, won't you, Paul? Oh, oh sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sorry, I couldn't resist. So, so we have some. some various issues with other boards that make automation challenging, like I mentioned, the, the uh, hard rebooting, and um, there's a serial console problem in one of them that we're trying to deal with. Some of them are, are things that could potentially be resolved within a week or so. Mm -hmm. Some of them are things that, really that might require modifications to these devices that 
Um, so we need to work with them to, to try to get free for the longer term. Okay. And That's some right. of them are just because we don't actually possess the device yet. What, what do you do with those boards where where the kernel is booted from an SD card that you have to update through a separate machine? All of our versions are booted through an SD card. We don't make it on a separate machine. We keep an extra um, test partition on that card. We have okay. a recovery partition that we use to deploy uh, the new image to that, to that SD card. Okay, so, so if the first partition is broken, then you just tell you boot, boot if with the second If the first partition ever gets broken, then we have to rebuild it. So we have some out there locally that can do that. And so far, it hasn't been an issue. It's only happening. Okay, but, but your test partition is the second one then? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like uh, we do have a bit of a dependency for some of the things on, on validation, but it sounds like you're making the progress towards it. Right. Is that, uh, let's see. So does that, that match your your uh, view, Scott, of, of how this would work? There's uh, we can we can produce some stuff and then we we have some dependency on you and then when we get to that point we can go forward. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was expecting you to be doing whatever you're currently working on in your uh, blueprints, and I'd be upstreaming and fixing uh, current uh, enable problems. Right. And we'd be pushing towards the same current, but the thing is. It, it's not reasonable for Nico to have to go and say, test everything is in, right. and, and put that burden on him. I right. don't want that burden put on the landing teams. Okay. But what I'd really like to do is be able to have the landing teams do some automated work. Right. That so would be really good. You know, you, you start with having a little a, a tree that we watch and do that. I want the landing teams to have that tree too. Right. So yeah, because the landing team, I, I'm sure they are testing their own work. Yeah. What I want them to test is whether or not what I merge from other teams would break what they've done. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, what I'm trying to tell you is that I want them to have a tree that's based off of yours mm -hmm. and keep updating it so that it's actually close <coughs> to what you already have. So that when we, we're merging, it's close. Yeah. And there's going to be some deltas for things. But, but, so anyway. they, need to, they, need, they need to learn uh, Git rebase. <laughs> <laughs> that's very handy, by the way. Git rebase dash out. It changed my life. It's changed yours. As long as it's not on a public, you don't ever do that on a public tree. Mm -hmm. No, it's their own tree, so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, in my case, when I do it, I yeah, it's on a private tree, and even then, I leave a, a label on the old stuff, so the old stuff never goes away. Mm -hmm. so, uh, get branch, and get rebase. So I'm, a, the, I'm a digital pack rat. Right? And would you change yeah, to the next calendar? Calendar. Yeah, sure. Porter. 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 What would be the strategy of moving calendar? Do you stay? Do you wait for the next calendar? Yeah, I I'll, I'll wait for the next. Uh, this this uh, for two six thirty eight. Uh, people wanted me to, to move to two six thirty eight early. So I think I switched when it was 2638RC5, something like that. And by the time 2638 was released, it became so hard to maintain that I just scrapped the tree and rebuilt it onto the, the latest mm -hmm. stable branch. So I don't want to repeat that error again. So the next tree, 2639, will be built once mainline has released. I won't start on an RC uh, release anymore. Because by the time I want to merge, what I do, I merge the latest ARM stuff that is being proposed is within the merge window. So if what I merged before is different from what is getting into mainline afterwards, then it becomes a yeah, yeah. party of uh, conflicts and everywhere. Two minutes left. Okay, so we're getting uh, towards the end of the session here. We've got two minutes left. Um, I guess the situation as I see it is that uh, the kernel team is responsible for the main lineable portion of the kernel. There are some, play for example, the device tree branch is one we keep that will be some time before it's mainline, but the point is that we keep stuff that's on its way to mainline on some time frame. Um, preferably a short one. Uh, if it's something like device tree, it's something that gets uh, special attention before. Yeah, if it's, it. if it's something we are actively working on, then I, I don't mind carrying it into the kernel. Yeah, yeah but I mean, as, long as, as long as there's a good plan to get it upstream as opposed to just right. wishes and hopes, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, the, so the, the uh, thing is, is that we need the landing teams to put their function on top, uh, preferably uh, in some organized fashion on top of, you know, git clone and git rebase. Um, and I can volunteer to help uh, since, I, since I'm a recent uh, Git addict, and I'm kind of multiple you guys to be the point of collection for landing. I'm sorry. Submission. I'm kind of expecting you guys to be the point of collection 
Right. If they, if yeah. they, if the stuff that they do that's, that's mainlineable comes in through uh, Nikola's tree and stays there. What we'll need them to provide is the stuff that's needed for the device to work reasonably, but which is, for whatever reason, uh, in that, in that for me, like mm -hmm. the graphics drivers being a common case. Yeah, yeah. I, so, I, I was kind of hoping you might take some enablement stuff too. It wasn't six million lines of code. But, uh, oh, another. Uh, um, I think that qualifies. When you say enablement code, uh, give me an example. Uh, well, I mean, I've got code yeah. that you know that will go in and not create havoc, but it's still not upstreamable. Okay. So okay. clean. So it's clean gotta up. be cleaned. Okay. I'll well, I think I think there's a separate session this week for landing team and kernel team. Yeah, to talk I mean, about that, that would be a great yeah, topic. And we can yeah, talk about that's that. That's the topic yeah. I have to discuss. Yeah. 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 I bet. <laughs> I, I think from, yeah. so. from this discussion, one action item I'm seeing is um, for someone to go talk. I don't know, maybe to the landing teams or directly to the vendors about moving to this model of having the graphics drivers and other cool source drivers be modules and coming up with a sort of consistent way of packaging those. And we can, we can, I guess we can talk about that. We can take that as an action item to talk about at the landing team, kernel team uh, yeah, discussion. That's one of the things that I'm talking about. How we get about yeah. Do you know when is that meeting? Um, okay, no, but I can find it. <laughs> yes. Can, is, can you put that before yeah. Wednesday? There's a link on Wednesday evening, and I would like to. Before everyone leaves, real quick, I just want to ask, is there a GCC ARM developer here? Just me. Read your mind. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, 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 no. We have to talk about it now, but I, I have to talk about I have some things Sorry, I need to talk to you guys about. So. Okay. Oh, what, is, is there something else going on here after, or is this thing done? It's scheduled for 5 o'clock on Wednesday. And this is done at, we're done at uh, 6, so we can so stay here. Okay, yeah. oh, so. Are you paying for uh, right now, for GCC 4.60 for x 6 the dash MF entry got in. Do you think you guys could do it for ARM? Do you really know what it, even know what it is? No, I haven't yet looked at it. What? I haven't yet looked at it. Oh, well, you don't get one. Do you know about the dash PG yeah. option of yeah. the M count? It's a uh, it's another way of doing it. Instead of doing it at the after the frame has been set up, it does it right at the entry point of function. Okay. So, I mean, that's actually a platform specific on some platforms, M count is called right at the beginning. Is it? So, yeah. yeah. So, will that make effort, uh, if, well, is it, is it for ARM? I, I don't know how I don't, I don't think it is. Uh, if it, uh, I, I don't think it is. And if it, basically I need it, if, for, for platforms that do it, they should just make F, then F, M entry could be accepted, but they know if it, if, But no, but it still has to switch the, it still actually has to change M count. Instead of calling M count, it calls F entry. So maybe they put that in and just change the name of what it calls. And should I give you the common, should it be a common option rather than an M F N P? But that's what they gave it. I don't know. I, I know because it's it's already implemented. Um, X, uh, it's a four point six for X eighty six. Okay. So and the uh, reason why is this F trace is dependent on it. or the new uh, I have new things of new functionality for F trace that depends on. And I want to make sure that this functionality is not lost in our or other platforms. I have to bring. I should have brought my. I have to bring my cards. So I will give it to you. So I don't know. You have cards. And you just. Yeah. Just. Uh,